Hello. Uh, in the last class, uh, we discussed uh, some examples on exact solutions of navier stokes equations. Uh, so, in particular, if you consider flow between two parallel plates, uh, where the upper plate is moving, so the velocity profile is just a function of uh, the velocity of the plate and uh, the coordinate, okay, uh, and uh, the distance between the plates, okay. So now, uh, if you if you try to plot, so what would happen? Uh, is uh, somebody may fix uh, some particular pressure gradient and then uh, try to plot uh, with h okay uh, somebody may fix uh, another uh, pressure gradient and then try to plot h and then they claim uh, uh, the values are same or different so that means there is a trade off in some sense okay so how to resolve the trade off okay so if you particularly pay attention to these velocity profiles they are dimensional Okay. If you consider shear stress, they are dimensional. So, whatever the physical quantity that we have uh, computed, so they are dimensional. Okay. So, now uh, uh, we will ask a question. So, really uh, do we need dimensions uh, and then uh, uh, if we have uh, what is a scenario and then uh, if you want to get rid of them, uh, what is the advantage. Okay. So, correspondingly uh, we are discussing dimensional analysis and non-dimensional analysis. Navier Stokes equations. So, to start with the dimensional analysis. So, the first question that we are asking is do we need dimensions. Okay. So, why we are asking this question? So, we can address using the following example. So, consider the velocity in case of covert flow. So, as I indicated velocity is uh, uh, depending on the velocity of the upper plate, distance between the plates and the y coordinate. Okay. Let us say in order to measure velocity at y equals to 1 meter, a student 1 has considered v is uh, 100 meters per second, h is 10 meters, then we have accordingly u is uh, 10 meter per second. Suppose student 2, v is 20 meter per second, h is 2 meters, then also we have u the same. Okay. So, naturally uh, so these two students may get on a quarrel no no my solution is correct uh, or no my solution is correct okay so indeed both the solutions are correct okay so in some sense if you observe closely you have uh, infinite number of solutions right so how to uh, resolve this uh, okay you see carefully since this depends on these quantities we would like to measure the velocity at y equal to 1 so you have several combinations in order to get u 10, one can take various combinations of v and h. Okay. So, that is the reason infinite number of combinations to get the same velocity. Okay. So, what is the necessity of a dimension okay. and what is the necessity of a non-dimensionalization. Okay. So, what global aim is, uh, let us say somebody uh, has, uh, has done some experiment on a small uh, let us say uh, small uh, environment with uh, some dimensions in a tank let us say and then they want to scale it up. Okay. So, how do they do? So, in these cases uh, the corresponding dimensional analysis uh, play a role. So, let us see how this can be achieved. So, what is the remedy? Identify sortable characteristic quantities and non-dimensionalize all of the physical quantities involved like velocity pressure etcetera to make them unitless. For example, you take a h, h is nothing but the distance between the plates. So, we one can normalize using some length, v is velocity. So, one can normalize. Okay. So, h can be used to normalize any length and v can be used to normalize velocity. So, you define u by v. So, this will be non-dimensionalized we are calling it u prime y by h which will be a non-dimensionalized uh, length scale which we are calling u y prime. So, now if you consider u prime equals to y prime. So, this is non-dimensional quantity. So, any variations if you would like to discuss. So, simply u varying with y. Okay. So, this is this in some sense incorporating this structure. The entire trade offs that we have they are hidden 
in in this and uh, simply u is function of y ok so this is the advantage so therefore uh, we would like to discuss uh, more about uh, the dimensional analysis and uh, look into the corresponding uh, uh, algebra so dimensional homogeneity any physically meaningful equation will have the same dimensions on both the sides the property known as dimensional homogeneity what does it mean so let us say you have a standard equation which is force balance so f equals to ma plus some quantity okay so now for a dimensional homogeneity left hand side denotes force right hand side first part denotes force therefore f has to have dimensions of force so that is the dimensional homogeneity okay now what are the fundamental uh, quantities that uh, that are used uh, indicating the dimensions so these are the three which are uh, uh, mass is m length l and time is t so correspondingly uh, all the physical quantities will be represented in terms of mlt so let us look at uh, quickly some quantities so for example velocity has dimensions l t power minus 1 because distance by time right similarly acceleration uh, distance by time square so therefore l t power minus 2 force mass into acceleration so energy so correspondingly pressure density viscosity surface tension okay so these are represented the dimensions are represented in terms of mlt okay so now uh, for a particular physical problem how do we figure out uh, how do we group this uh, these non dimensional uh, uh, groups okay so that means our global aim is uh, to identify some non dimensional groups so that you do not talk about uh, a particular pressure gradient, particular distance etcetera. So, you identify a non dimensional group and then you fix that for this value this is what happening. So, we can uh, indicate ok all the trade offs are uh, completely uh, hidden into that uh, non dimensional group ok. So, our aim is to identify such non dimensional groups. So, for this a uh, powerful tool is called Buckingham's pi theorem. So, what does it uh, state? The total number of dimensional parameters n can be grouped into n minus m dimensionless groups, where m is the minimum number of independent dimensions, okay. which means suppose you have uh, n dimensional parameters, then uh, m minimum number of independent dimensions then n minus m dimensional groups can be identified ok. So, in a in a little formal sense suppose q 1 q 2 q n are the dimensional parameters ok uh, in a balance equation or whatever then what we are trying to say is this can be put it in a structure like m are the minimum in, uh, number of independent dimensions therefore, uh, this can be grouped in such a way that pi 1, pi 2, pi n minus m, where each of these pi i's are the dimensional less groups. Okay. So, this is uh, appears very abstract, but uh, let us uh, look at uh, more uh, uh, categorically. So, for this uh, we would like to take an example and then uh, display. So, consider the pressure drop in a pipe of length l that depends on the diameter d, mean velocity v, density rho, dynamic viscosity mu. Okay. So, please pay attention we have uh, various physical quantities. So, length, pressure drop, diameter, mean velocity, density and dynamic viscosity. So, as per the Buckingham's pi theorem we have 6 dimensional parameters what are they pressure is also included diameter, length, velocity, density and viscosity and the minimum number of independent dimensions MLT. So, therefore, as per uh, Buckingham pi theorem n minus m that is a 6 minus 3. So, we we must have 3 dimensionless groups. So, they are given by pi 1, pi 2, pi 3. Okay. So, let us uh, try to get some insights. Uh, how do we 
uh, identify these uh, uh, dimensionless uh, groups uh, that is a that is a task at hand okay so if you see uh, we are saying one can choose these options okay but if you see uh, for what variables we can have uh, such powers and what are the free variables so there are there is a trade off okay so how do we fix it if you see closely length this is attached to the geometry velocity it is uh, the flow property whereas uh, density is the fluid property okay so this is the flow property depending on the context similarly length and the velocity flow property and this is fluid property okay so while choosing these dimensionless groups we must have these three with some power we do not know what is the power we have to determine so that pi 1 is non dimensional and once these three are fixed other ones we can uh, vary so that we have uh, these uh, non dimensional groups involving viscosity involving diameter involving pressure okay so we will explain with one of them so let us consider uh, the pi 3 what we are trying to do is we are trying to get a non dimensional group that involve pressure length velocity and density so that means in some sense we are trying to identify some quantity that will have dimensions of pressure so that we can normalize and that pi 3 will be non dimensional so once we expect pi 3 to be non dimensional naturally the powers are going to be zero and right hand side we have these powers okay so correspondingly we get these values right so how do we get these values so let us have a uh, look at this so what we have is pi 3 okay so this we have written as a combination of length velocity and pressure this is pressure so now we expand so velocity has a dimensions l by t then uh, density so density then p okay So, we expand then pressure. So, pressure we have so now we would like to get the powers of L, M and T. So, correspondingly if we consider what we get Okay. So, one can simplify this so that we get this okay. because we have left hand side m power 0 l power 0. So, we equate this is 0, this is 0, this is 0 and solve the system so that we get. So, once we get this what is our pi 3 l power 0 v power minus 2 rho power minus 1 which is nothing but p by rho v square which means this is a non dimensional group that means if we have to non dimensionalize pressure we can use rho v square so that pi 3 is a non dimensional group so now what does it mean the trade off between the density and velocity is hidden and uh, one can non dimensionalize and then uh, get non dimensional pressure as you declare let us say p prime 
which is non dimensional like this. So, this is a non dimensional pressure and hence we can uh, deal with uh, non dimensional quantities. Okay. So, similarly if we work uh, similar algebra we get uh, uh, another uh, two non dimensional groups one is uh, d by l another is mu by rho v l. Okay. So, with these uh, non dimensionalization so we are ready to uh, go for non dimensionalization of uh, navier stokes equations which is very much uh, essential to understand uh, additional insights on the navier stokes okay so that is the next section non dimensionalization of navier stokes equation so let us consider uh, navier stokes equation given by equation of continuity and we are considering unsteady viscous incompressible case and we have also external forces now the question is what are these uh, non dimensional uh, num, uh, variables that we are using. So, that depends on the geometry. So, in the case of uh, say flow between two parallel plates. Uh, so, one can use for velocity the velocity of the upper plate and uh, for length uh, one can use uh, the distance between the plates. Uh, okay. So, since they depend on the geometry of the problem uh, we call them as characteristic quantities which vary depending on the geometry. Okay. So, correspondingly we are introducing some characteristic or reference quantities for example, for length l velocity u which is constant and pressure just now we have seen in addition uh, for pressure this is also another uh, non dimensional group and uh, time. So, which means we are defining non dimensional physical variables which we are denoting with primes. So, here u prime is u by u and uh, any length is a uh, corresponding length by l and pressure p by this or one can take p by rho v u square and a time and similarly uh, the only external force is f bar. So, we are assuming uh, some uh, uh, force dimensions uh, of the magnitude and then uh, we are uh, uh, normalizing. Okay. So, once we define such non dimensional quantities what is our aim? Our aim is to convert these two equations uh, in terms of these prime variables which are non dimensional. Okay. So, how do we do it? So, we have to play with uh, the equation. So, please uh, uh, pay attention those who are comfortable with uh, vector notation one can follow, but I will uh, explain also in component form. So, consider the equation of continuity. So, in order to normalize the gradient operator uh, we have to introduce l in the denominator because uh, we have dou by dou x. So, x x i we have to non dimensionalize that means x i by l into l okay. and similarly u. So, you divide by velocity and multiply by velocity. So, that is how this is coming. So, I am sure some of you will have difficulty. So, let me explain. So, this is what we have. So, which means say dou u by dou x plus dou v by dou y equals to 0. So, now our non dimensional quantities are x prime is and u is. So, what we do is consider. So, for u divide and multiply for x divide and multiply this will be u by l and this is nothing but according to this u prime this is according to this x prime. So, therefore, this is nothing but similarly so v so u l. So, this will be u by l. So, that is what we have written you can see u by l these are in terms of primes. Okay. So, therefore, it is invariant. Okay. So, now let us look at the momentum balance equation. So, what we are trying to do is the same process since we have u we divide and multiply by u then t 
divided and multiply by t. Similarly, u dot grad u and the corresponding pressure etcetera. So, uh, I am sure it will be slightly difficult. So, let us uh, do it uh, so that uh, we understand uh, in a better way. So, I will explain u dot grad u. So, this is in component form So, this is x component I have written. Okay. So, this is a let us say x component, so, we can write the y component as well. Okay. So, y component will be in 2 d. So, if we do it for one of them, uh, it uh, this one is understood. So, let us consider this one. So, we have u dou u by dou x. So, we have a u there multiply and divided. So, therefore, this becomes u square l. So, here x is in the denominator. So, therefore, l has to be given. So, correspondingly what we have got. So, this becomes u prime, this becomes u prime, this becomes x prime. So, what we are getting is u square by l u prime Since we are using the same length scales for y, same uh, uh, velocity scales for v. So, even if we non dimensionalize this, we are going to get the same prefactor. Okay. So, you can see, so that is what we are getting u square by l. However, since uh, we have a density, so correspondingly rho is multiplied and these are. Now, similarly, pressure. So, let us see. Uh, this is minus ok. So, we can take uh, one of them say you consider. So, what we have decided is for x l and p mu u by l. So, that is what uh, we have discussed. So, p mu u by l. So, into mu u by l into l. So, we get this quantity is p prime, this quantity is x prime. So, therefore, we get and uh, what we get? So, this is the prefactor. So, that is what we are getting mu u by l square and correspondingly these are non dimensionalized. So, this is our p prime. So, similarly Laplacian. So, Laplacian is again uh, slightly involved. So, we have let us consider del square u. So, we introduce u by u l square. So, similarly so therefore, what we get is u by l square u prime. Okay. So, that is how we are getting u by l square and since mu is multiplied. So, mu is multiplied here and uh, this uh, uh, force is normalized by corresponding magnitude okay, which has force dimensions. So, we got the simplified uh, equation. Okay. So, now what is our aim? We would like to get uh, the non dimensionalized groupings. So, in order to do this we divide throughout by mu u by l square. Okay. This is common here. So, you divide. So, we take it to the other side so, divide by this. So, each of them for example, rho u square l I am considering the convective term. So, this we are dividing by 
mu u by l square and uh, what is the corresponding term from where this is coming. So, let us consider this is coming from viscous term. So, that means, I am taking the ratio of this and ratio of this. Okay. So, this is like this rho u square by l okay, and the corresponding So, we have so we got a non dimensionalized group here, which is nothing but rho u l by mu. So, this is a non dimensional group, which is coming by virtue of the ratio of inertial forces to viscous forces. This is a non dimensional group ok. So, similarly the first uh, unsteady parameter if we take the ratio of uh, this coefficient with uh, uh, dividing by this we we got the corresponding parameter here and the one just now what we have got by virtue of ratio of inertial forces uh, to viscous forces. So, for example, mu by rho is nu. So, if we use it what we got is u l by nu which is called Reynolds number. So, Reynolds number is the one that characterizes uh, uh, the, the magnitude of the inertial terms. Okay. So, if the Reynolds number is high, so it is uh, naturally the velocities are high because the nonlinear term is sitting in the inertial term. If the Reynolds number is low, so then uh, uh, definitely the nonlinear terms contribution is uh, less. Okay. So, we discuss uh, definitely little bit about this in later lectures. So, similarly, uh, the uh, body force term. So, we have uh, the body force term and the corresponding term uh, we can uh, adjust. So, this is a nothing but multiplying and dividing by this, uh, because we have body force term we are left with this. So, we are playing with this. So, multiplying dividing by this then uh, this combination is Reynolds number and we are left with this and one can do some adjustment and define the entire ratio as R e by f r, where f r is called fraud number. So, which is a uh, uh, indicating uh, the the force ratio. Okay. So, this is indicating the force ratio. So, which is a non dimensional group. So, once uh, we have a non dimensionalization of the Navier Stokes equation, we have uh, three uh, non dimensional parameters one is uh, the corresponding frequency parameter, another is the Reynolds number and other one is the uh, non dimensional uh, force parameter that is called fraud number. Okay. So, we would like to work with uh, non dimensional systems, so that uh, the entire trade offs across uh, velocity, viscosity, density etcetera, they are taken care in non dimensional groups. So, that means, there is no debate what should be the viscosity what should be the density, so that I get this velocity. Such questions can be addressed that means, we are really scaling up. Okay. So, in a non dimensional sense we are talking all the physical quantities and uh, if you want to scale it up only you talk in terms of the these non dimensional groups. So, that is the global aim. Okay. So, now uh, creeping flow. So, if the Reynolds number is uh, very low tending to 0, so that means, we are neglecting the the inertial terms okay so we get uh, this right and if it is a further steady case then we get uh, these are called uh, stokes equations so what is the physical significance physical significance is as i indicated you take inertial term x component i have taken then this is a viscous term this ratio already i have explained we get this which is nothing but the reynolds number so in some sense what we are getting after doing the non dimensionalization is the competition across various forces. So, Reynolds number is uh, the competition between inertial force to viscous force and similarly fraud number is competition between inertial or convective force to body force and uh, then uh, 
this particular is body force to viscous force. Okay. So, when we say viscous force are dominating, so then the denominator is a large, so Reynolds number is small. Okay. So, when we say inertial force are large, so then uh, Reynolds number is large. So, uh, one can control order uh, of the Reynolds number and correspondingly uh, assess the results. So, these are very useful for uh, scaling up uh, purposes. Okay. So, with this you got uh, uh, some idea about non dimensionalization and uh, how to identify uh, the non dimensional groups etcetera. Thank you.